Tef Kalizibe, chairman of the Senior Staff Association of Nigeria University, Sanu, at the Federal University of Tuake, reveals that only 25% of the withheld salaries were paid to non-academic university staff. And this is contrary to President Bola Tinubu's directive. Kalizibe noted that workers were expecting two months pay. That is around 50%. But they received only one month. And that's 25% of their four-month withheld salaries. Kalizibe said the union awaits further instruction from the Joint Action Committee to decide on the continuation or suspension of the strike. So Sanu's national president, Mohamed Ibrahim, previously stated that the strike would end if the federal government honored the president's 50% payment directive, acknowledging the financial difficulties that members are facing due to high costs of leaving. The indefinite strike led by both Sanu and the non-academic staff union, that's NASU, began on October 28, pressing for the full release of withheld wages. However, it remained uncertain if the payment of only one month salary will satisfy the union's demands because they said they have to meet to find out if the strike will continue or if they'll put it to an end. Yes, let me bring you in on this one first off. Thank you very much. Thank you. The, the issue of the withheld salary, I, I think if the president in his <coughs> own magnanimity has said that 50% should be released, then it should be released to this people. We all know the kind of the economy we are facing today. It's even difficult for you know, the staffs to feed well in their family. Talk more with the non-academic non staff that their, their salary is not even enough. So the, the only thing I, I would say here is, if the president has said 50% should be, not even all, 50% should be released, then it should be given to them. How much attention are we really paying on education and things like this? We get it in the news almost all the time. If, if, I, if I'm to, talk, to really talk deep about the strike, then there's a whole lot to talk about it. It's just like what happened uh, years ago while I was in school mm. when ASU, you know, embarked on an indefinite strike. Then I asked, I approached a lecturer then, and I asked this question. The strike you, you, you people have embarked on, is it at the detriment of the government or the students? Because I feel strike shouldn't be the only two. Because if you have the student, your student at heart, you should know that the strike is at a detriment. Because academic calendar is going to be compressed. It's just like now, if we have, uh, let's say, three months in a semester, and you embarked on a strike, and the strike has lasted for one and a half months. Uh, most of the time, you're going to, you agree with me that the other one and a half months that is remaining will be compressed. And the question is, how many students? It's even difficult when you have the normal calendar. Now you're compressing the calendar. So who is suffering these things? <laughs> there should be another way out. Rather than embarking on strike, that is not in any way, you know, doing good to the students. But it looks like when they say that, when they announce that there's a strike, that's when the federal government will then sit down and call them to the negotiation table. That's because they, 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 they've, uh, they've created this mind in the federal government that the only, the only way they can, they can actually call their attention is to strike. Who created the mindset in the federal government? This is they, something they that they have tried, they have tested, and it is trusted. I mean, the, the, the um, NLC this, did it. The question is, and attention was suddenly to, called to minimum to, wage. You know, dialogue. To, have you tried to bring in another, you know, procedure? You know, usually before they go on strike, they they would say, "Oh, we have tried to reach out to the government. We have tried dialogue." They always say that because they know that people definitely want to call their attention to dialogue. But let's bring El Nino to this conversation. Uh, you see, what's, what's happening is something that cannot be overemphasized. If you look at it, Nigeria as a country has gone past all of what's happening now. If you look at the other countries that have the best of educational strikes, if you look at it, first and foremost, from time immemorial, I think I've lived over 
over four decades on earth. And from the onset, as a toddler, I've heard of Asu, Sanu, Nasu, whatever strike. As a toddler? As a toddler. And uh, that is from, from the early 80s. They've always gone on strike without result. And the without the result? There are times when monies have been re released to them. So would you not call that result? Uh, it, it, can, it can be likened to what's happening in the, in the oil industry today in Nigeria. Which is? We are talking about fuel. <laughs> uh, one is asking for 100% and you pay 25%. Is that a result? It's not, it's not. What, 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 what the people earn in the academia, both academic and non-academic, can be regarded as slave wage. When I say slave wage, your salary is 300,000, but, but you're indebted even before the money comes. It, it's not that you pay. 700,000 naira debt before you receive 300. That is it. So, and owing them, a man that is indebted, they are still owing the man again. <laughs> and the only time they call a truce is only when they go for <laughs> negotiations. And the only, uh, and the only thing they, uh, they understand here is strike. When they strike, it open doors for negotiation and renegotiation. Now the federal government said they should pay how many percent? 50%. 50 percent. And they'll be giving how, how many percent? 25 percent. Is it that they don't have a template for payment? Please, if there's a template, you should know this, this, and this is what is supposed to be coming into the academia. Now, the academia is supposed to be only the, uh, the full groom of, of the society. That's why you are having a lot of the brain brain drive. So if you don't pay the, uh, uh, the Sanu Asu well, it means they be paying lip service to their, or, or to their primary assignment. Now, this is not of global practice. It is anti-human. Why is it that Nigeria goes, goes borrowing to uh, uh, Otosoro? You hear today that taking social amount of money from IMF, this, that, World Bank, is it that they don't include people in the academia into their plans? I don't know. No. If you can borrow, if you can borrow fifty trillion, not billion, fifty trillion, for the Loga, uh, for the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road, and you are not borrowing to satisfy the people in the academia. I think this is what we call putting square square pegs in round holes. Okay, that call that brings your attention to what you've talked about earlier about the strike. You were asking why they go on strike if there are no other options. Well, he has explained now from his analysis that usually that's what draws the attention of the federal government. But the sad part is still what you said about the students being the ones who are really, really affected. Now, let's look at the effect of this strike on students. A lot of times when lecturers go on strike, lecturers, whether, okay, let's look at lecturers now. They when when they come back or when they are not paid rather before they go on strike when they are owed salaries they come back and they put it on the students either they don't come to class sometimes they just give you an assignment when it's close to exam and they give you an assignment on everything that you should have learned for that semester and they assume that with that you have been taught so these are the attitudes that some lecturers are bringing to school. And this is definitely affecting our educational system at the moment. So I'd like you to talk a bit on that before we move on to our next story. All right. Thank you. You know, just like my, my colleague has said, let me start from the government. You know, the, the issue we're having is this. Our government feel they can combine all the problems we have in the country and solve it immediately. Mm. It's not possible. Okay. What I feel, we, 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 ed, our educational system, we have a little setback. We have been setback, like he has said. The government is not paying attention to education. And that is why we have been setback. What I feel the government should have done is this. If a government should come on board, concentrate on a sector and fix it. If, you, if I should come on board as, let's say, you, 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 you're on board today, Fix a, you must not be able to fix all the sectors. Fix a sector. If you can, if you can do just that, Nigeria will celebrate you. And Nigeria is patient for the government to other fix governments, you know, sectors. other governments will come and maybe fix the other sector. 
educational sector need to be paid attention to. No, we, we cannot even allow other sectors to suffer. Because the truth is, every no. sector matters. Fixing, Health matters. Listen. Education matters. Listen. Fixing a sector, whatever I mean by fixing a sector, does not mean you're going to pay negligence to other, other sector. But you concentrate more. Like, there is a whole lot to do in fixing the educational sector. Like I said, do you know that the salary of an average lecturer is not even enough? And, you know, they talked about the minimum wage that they just increased. I, I was, when they said they've done, they've done so well by increasing me, I said, well, how much can 70,000, if you have, let's say you have a family of three, can 70,000 naira feed a family of three for one week? How much is the back of rice? You're you, you celebrating that you've done something good for, you know, your, your civil servant that you've increased minimum wage. Right.